This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Clint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Dees joining us here at Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Hey, what up? Happy Tuesday. Welcome, Jason Walker Show. We are inside the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave. Whatever you need done around the house, above all handyman services, will get it done. Coming up today, we're going to talk to Big Fork football coach Jim Ben. What can be done to avoid conflicts between parents, officials, coaches, and the such? Also, uh, your Montana Rodeo Roundup for the first time this year is on the way. You can watch the show on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can listen on Podbean, Network One Sports, TreasureStateRadio.com. And as always, you can tweet us at Sports. Our email, Jason, at JasonWalkerShow.com. And our phone number is 406-209-1267. Let's see. On this day in history on the way, the walk-off, and more as well. Uh, before we get going, tomorrow on the show, Cola Bad Bear is going to join us, the Bobcat uh, women's basketball standout. Looking forward to chatting with Cola. And that'll be tomorrow along with uh, Alex Eshelman. And, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a good show tomorrow. Of course, it's a good show today, too, and we thank you for uh, tuning in. The opening segment brought to you by Montana Custom Log Homes, the premier log home company in the industry. With three distinct divisions, you've got milled log, handcrafted, and timber frame. They offer project management services that will build you a home of your dreams and your budget that is crafted to last for generations. Check out Montana Custom Log Homes at yourcustomlog.com to get started today. So, update on the Shoto School Board. Last night they held a meeting, and I have to go to my uh, text so, from all accounts and purposes, uh, it sounded like last night from a couple of sources, they were going to get rid of, um, the school board was going to not renew the contract of uh, volleyball uh, Coach Funk. So, what happened is they got enough support for Coach Funk that they tabled the decision until next month. Uh, they need more time to understand what's going on. Apparently, the superintendent also didn't correctly add it to the agenda, and the superintendent got called out for it. Remember last week we talked about this with school boards is, is, and complaints and whatnot. There's a chain of command, and it has to go you know, top to bottom or bottom to top or both. So we'll see what happens next month up in Shoto, which is crazy because it's that time of the year when teachers, you know, they need to know what's going on. Do they have a job or not? Let alone coaches. But we'll keep you updated on what's going on up in Shoto. Uh, congratulations to the Miles City Baseball and Miles, or Miles Community College Baseball and uh, softball teams as each has uh, advanced. Each one big, big tournaments yesterday. And it was pretty awesome. And uh, got to find the, uh, the actual thing I was looking for here. Oh, I think we'd be ready, right? I'm just kidding. We are ready. Uh, let's see here. So Miles Community College. Baseball won the conference championship, uh, beating Williston 
17 to 15 after trailing 8 to 2 and they'll host regionals coming up Friday and sun, uh, Friday through Sunday. And then softball team won the regional championship yesterday over Dawson and will host uh, the Super Regional versus Kirkwood out of Iowa coming up Saturday at 1 and 3. It's a best out of 3 series. Uh, Coach Juarez and Coach uh, Brabant have uh, got it going on over there. So congratulations to Miles Community College baseball and softball. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool deal for both of them. Uh, Let's see. Megan McGrath, Montana, named your Big Sky Softball Player of the Year. Voted on by coaches. Is uh, batted 386 this season, had a, a school record 15 home runs this year, and is the first Grizzly to be the Big Sky Player of the Year for softball. Grizz are number six in this week's Big Sky Tournament, the sixth seed, and uh, down in Ogden, Utah. So uh, congratulations to Megan McGrath. Started the season one for 16, and then over the last 39 games or so has gone 427. <laughs> and uh, hit eight home runs in the month of April. So uh, that's pretty, pretty cool. And since her sophomore season started, she has 34 home runs and just 34 strikeouts. That's getting it done. Congratulations to to her. That's really cool. Three Bozeman girls lacrosse players selected for the national tournament. And uh, they are Ruby Gilbreth, Stephanie uh, Leibinger, and Eloise Trafton. So a team of Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho players will uh, head to Baltimore, Maryland over Memorial Day weekend and compete for the USA Lacrosse National Tournament. Four players last time were chosen uh, to attend from Bozeman. This year, three. So uh, that's awesome. Speaking of lacrosse, Montana State men lost, but the Montana lacrosse team beat Florida Gulf Coast in the first round of the lacrosse, uh, Collegiate Lacrosse Lacrosse Association Division II National Championships down in Austin, Texas. Montana got the game winner with 12 seconds to go. And it's its first win at the national tournament since the 07 championship. Seven and four all time. And now Montana, 15 and five on the year, is going to play Cal State San Marcos tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. San Marcos beat uh, the third seed, Kennesaw State. The eight seed, Bobcats, were taken down by Missouri State, uh, the nine seed, 13 to eight. College of Idaho was ranked second and lost to the 15th seed UNC Charlotte, 17-16. So, MSU out. UM continues down in Austin and playing tonight at 5 p.m. Good luck to uh, the Grizz lacrosse team. All right, it's a quick break. We'll come back. When we return... We're going to be joined by Big Fork football coach and uh, teacher Jim Ben, who's going to talk about what's been going on across the state the last uh, year or so with school boards going willy-nilly, uh, getting rid of coaches in the state, and what can be done to keep parents from causing more and more conflicts. So we'll talk to Coach Ben coming up, also your Montana Rodeo Roundup just around the corner, and much more still to come on a Tuesday, this is the Jason Walker Show opening segment brought to you by Montana Custom Log Homes. Over 50 years experience and the finest craftsmen available in western Montana. They'll build you a home crafted to last for generations. Check them out at yourcustomlog.com to get started today. Big Four Coach Jim Ben next on the Jason Walker Show. Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. From a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality. Because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. 
Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Father's Day is coming fast, and what more would that great dad in your life want than a full detail from Auto Concepts? Or maybe he would just prefer a lift kit. It's also camping season, and now is the perfect time to outfit that rig with a winch just in case. Auto Concepts is your home for everything for your vehicle, including updating your car stereo system too. Auto Concepts also has gift certificates for dad or yourself. Visit AutoConceptsHelena.com. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show on a Tuesday. Tomorrow, Alex Ashelman, Cola Bad Bear will join us. Looking forward to uh, chatting with those two young ladies. Here inside the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave, your Montana Rodeo Roundup on the way, and uh, on the state in history, and much more. But... It was, uh, well, it's been a couple weeks, and Jim Ben from Big Fork, a uh, very well-spoken uh, coach and teacher, he's had some thoughts about the handling of uh, Clint Lang out at Jefferson and others across the state of Montana, and he took some time out of his schedule earlier today teaching to join us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline to talk about the relationship between players, coaches, and parents, and officials, and how it all needs to get better. And he joins us now here on the Jason Walker Show. Well, Coach, uh, you and I have had some chats. I've uh, been reading some of your stuff. But uh, before we dive into all of that stuff, how's, uh, how's spring life right now up in Big Fork? 
going good. I'm volunteering with the track program, and looks, we've got a good boys and girls team this year. We've got right around 70 kids out for track, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, you, you got football kids that you uh, get to coach and track, too, which is always a big deal, right? Yeah, to me, that's spring football for Montana's sake. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Uh, let's see. You've got a lot of books behind you. I've got some, but you can't see them because I've got helmets and stuff in the way. But what's your favorite book up on that shelf? Um, I would probably say the John Wooden Pyramid. Okay. Or, or Bill Walsh's, you know, building a foot, successful football ah. program. Which you've done. <laughs> Uh, you know, that, uh, that's a year-to-year thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Jim, Ben joining us, the Big Fork football coach. All right. Um, you reached out to me, and I reached out to you, and you've been in the, in the newspapers the last couple of weeks with everything that's been going on across the state. It, we saw it in Frenchtown. We saw it in Anaconda. We saw it in uh, Jefferson High. White Sulphur Springs. And uh, Shoto is trying to get rid of a coach, it sounds like, too. Um, Long yeah. time, great well, successful. I've had different people reach out at different other schools that are kind of going through similar similar things. Um, you know, it just seems to be spring's always kind of a rough time in a school district because uh, there's change. Mm-hmm. Yep, and you know, some of it, you know, it, it's hard because, and, and I've talked with you about this and, and and everything, but you know, teachers don't make a lot in this state. My dad used to be a teacher; he was in administration up until a couple years ago. Coaches get paid nothing. It's basically a volunteer effort. Um, but this is, you know, it, it's tough right now to be a teacher slash coach in the state of Montana right now, isn't it? Yeah, and I think we're dealing with some after effects from the COVID time. And um, there just seems to be some, uh, I don't know if it's misplaced anger or anger. Um, and it, it's kind of coming out of people in, in strange ways. Um, that's, I guess that's the best observation I can make from, uh, what I'm seeing around the state, but the, you know, this, this kind of battle with coaches and parents and, you know, that, that seems to be something that's gone on for a long, long time. It definitely has. And there's, I don't know if there's a solution to that coach, um, other than just tell parents to do it themselves, I guess, if they want, but you know, there's a lot of positivity when it comes to parents, too. And, you know, let's start there because parents can be a big driving force behind a school, behind uh, uh, student athletes and obviously the coaching staff. Yeah, you know, I, I would say that, you know, since I've been here in Big Fork, I haven't had any issues, you know, knock on wood. It only takes one, I guess. But um, I'm really pleased with the community support here and um it's the support in having kids buy into a program and, um, you know, everybody moving forward together. Um, I think some of that is uh, built off of communication. You know, we all we all have different lenses that we look through when we're dealing with kids. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that we can all work to change is kind of understanding each other and maybe get out of this adversarial type role where coaches hate parents, parents hate coaches. Um, you know, we're all trying to do something right for kids. Um, so I'd like to see that, I guess, a little bit more. Well, and it, it falls in town to the officials category too, which we can dive into a little bit later, but we're losing officials across the state of Montana in all sports as well. But when it comes yeah, my, dad, my dad was a 25 year Hall of Fame MOA football official. So I grew up around, you know, listening to those guys, you know, so and so doesn't know the rules. And, you know, I try re- I try very hard to be um, understanding of their role in the game. Um, while I might have disagreements and try to make sure that it's done in a professional manner. Um, and I think, you know, that's something we all need to kind of keep in mind is they're making even less than the coaches are. Right. Which is. When you look at it and, you know, I, I, I guess the last couple decades, they've, you know, blamed the, the sports center culture for a lot of the way kids act. And then we see it with parents, too. Uh, is that do you feel a part of it? Um, you know, I think going back to saying there's different lenses. So when a coach is looking at his at his overall scheme of things, he's looking at it from the from the perspective of he's got to make sure the program is moving forward, which might mean a small sacrifice for this year's team. And it might mean the individual's got to maybe make a sacrifice. Whereas a parent literally is looking at the flip side of that, 
where they want the individual to be successful and then maybe the team and they're not all that concerned with you know the overall direction of the program and so that's where you kind of get this dividing idea um, and I, I think if you can from a coaching standpoint if you can understand why the parent is feeling this way um, and opening up the door a little bit you can kind of minimize some of that talking with big fork football coach and uh teacher uh jim ben I, do you teach spanish i do oh okay i can i can read the periodo <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't I, know I'm a, I'm a what's a jack of all trades master of none kind of thing so i teach <laughs> several different subjects nice nice well that's what teachers have to do to to be successful today um but yeah i mean it, it's it's frustrating coach when you when you Oh, someone's in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but Likely. when you yes, but when you look at parents and and how we can get them to be better. I mean, we've seen parents kicked out of high school games which, you know, and it's been trickling down into little league baseball and small fry football and things like that. Do you have well, what are your um, suggestions? Uh, I think the biggest thing is we hold parents to a lesser accountability than we do kids or coaches. If a kid's kicked out of a game, they miss the rest of that game and the next one, same for a coach. And I've seen parents kicked out of tournament games and they're right back in the next game. And, uh, you know, I would like to see some things maybe from the MHSA standpoint of, you know, not allowing those kinds of things or, you know, uh, I don't know, that that's the part that is kind of a, out of my realm, but I, I think that I'd like to see at least parents be held to the same standard that their kids are. That's a great place to start, um, you know, and, and take COVID out of the equation. You, I mean, we didn't see parents for a year. Was that the most relaxed year of coaching? <laughs> um, <laughs> not even remotely, because uh, there was a lot of anger because they just wanted to come watch their kids. Yeah. And, you know, if you had a parent that, uh, you know, maybe you had co-parenting and uh, step-parents, you know, that's four people. And sometimes kids were limited to two, two people. And uh, that created a lot of uh, strain from the coaching, you know, because you're trying to make sure people could get in and watch their kids. And uh, that, was, that was painful in its own right. So when you look at possible solutions. And I know you've talked to coaches, you've talked to, to players and people all across the state about this. What are they saying? And, and what are you coming up with? Um, you know, I think, I think the thing is that people are getting tired of is just, you know, people will pay thousands and thousands of dollars for AAU tournaments and, and these kinds of things. You know, there, there isn't a better bargain for your kids than high school sports. You know, by and large, I, I know here a kid pays a $20 activity fee and the equipment's provided. We provide travel um, and on and on. And I, I think if people understood that, you know, we're, we're not doing this because it's lucrative by any stretch of the imagination and that we do have their kids' vested interest at heart and we do care about their kids, that can eliminate a lot of those things. But I think there needs to be some, you know, I think individually within districts, there can be some parent training on these are reasonable expectations to have of a coach. Um, and these are things you probably shouldn't talk about. You, coaches shouldn't have to talk to parents about playing time. Um, it's not real productive. Right. Um, because, you know, there's a, a old basketball coach named Don Meyer, you know, used to say, well, if you can go get Johnny's parents and he agrees that um, your child should play more than Johnny, by all means. You know, and I use that example quite a bit. Because um, it's just it becomes futile to to have those conversations, and and a lot of times that's kind of what these these angry situations come down to, mm -hmm. um, at least from the standpoint of coach and parent. Um, you know, and I think on the coach's side of things, it's making sure that kids understand the roles. What, why are you playing offensive guard and not fullback? You know, why aren't you the quarterback? Um, why are you a JV player? Um, and I think that communication with the kid can help kind of help with the parent too and bridge the gap. Um, it's also nice that parents will encourage their kids to talk to the coaches because um, that solves lots of problems. Um, you know, and I, I try really hard not to be a hypocrite in this fashion. You know, I've, I've had kids that have played for other people and my, my advice is always go talk to the coach. If you don't like what's going on, communicate. And then if that doesn't solve things and you're still uncomfortable, then 
then we can potentially have that conversation. When when you look back a couple of weeks ago with with Jefferson High and you know you had talked to uh, to Bill Foley with ButteSports.com and and were very outspoken and you know you, you bring up parents held accountable. Well, coaches have to sign a code of conduct. That's you know that was a big issue with Jefferson and Clint Lang um, because he swore, but that happens in sports and it happens in music. It happens all over the place. And there's a time and a place for it, I think. You don't want to, I mean, you're not directing it at a player. But, Mm -hmm. you know, if parents have to sign a code of conduct and live up to it like a coach and the player have to for the school district, would that maybe solve some problems? Yeah, I use something I call a cap pack um, that I have the players and the parents sign that kind of explains their different roles. Um, that you know, kind of the expectations on each side. It has parents' expectations of coaches on it. You know, what should you expect from me? Um, what should the what should your kid expect from you as a parent? Right. You know, I think the biggest thing there is just after the game, pat them on the back, tell them you love them, and you enjoy watching them play because that's really what a kid wants. Um, but I, I think when you get into the you know the minutia of whether a coach was obscene or not obscene. Um, that's a correctable issue, you know. If as a, if as an administrator or a board that you'd like to see a coach change something, have that conversation so that, you know, because I think most of us we're, we're in a high critical area. You know, we're we're going to be critical of kids and have expectations of kids. I think most of us are just fine if someone can give us something constructive that we can improve on. Well, um, I, I mean, I had a player this year say, "Hey, co- coach, can we dial down?" you know, cussing at practice and those sorts of things. So as coaches, we started doing push-ups if we caught ourselves or if a kid caught us. You know, I think those are correctable things. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great idea. I love that. And, you know, it, and it, yeah, cussing is cussing, and it happens across society. We see it in movies. We see it all over the place. It's going to happen. But, it, it, I mean, pe- parents cuss. You know, when, if, they're, if they're making the complaint about the coach cussing, you, you know they're cussing about that coach while they're, uh, you know, cussing. But it's just there's so many great coaches across the state, and you guys are always trying to learn. You mentioned, you know, just a moment ago, if you'd like more, you'd be open to criticism at times. Like, you just use that as an example. And and coaches are always trying to make themselves better to make their kids better, too, because you brought it up. And Clint Lang's a great – I mean, passionate. You're passionate. Care about those kids. Love those kids like they're your own. Yeah, and we spend we spend a lot of time with them, and uh, you know you become very close with them, and that bond is something that you know that's what keeps me doing it. Is I enjoy that seeing the process of a kid coming in as a freshman to when they're graduating as a senior, and, and what kind of people they become, you know, through through the challenges of being a high school athlete. And, you know, I think the biggest goal that we all have to keep in mind is we're trying to teach kids how to fail safely. Um, and I think that's something that gets kind of missed is that they're supposed to fail. Right. And there's the difference between failing and failure. You know, that's I ripped that off from uh, Minnesota's coach, um, which, um, you know, ha- I blank out on names all the time. But, uh, you know, it, that stuff is, is really important. And, and that's why extracurriculars are part of the educational process. Is we, it's a chance to go out and, and fail. And I failed plenty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to continue to. And, and I think if we're all honest about that and understand that that's kind of the process that's important, um, we can do really great things with kids and for kids. Well, and, and one thing, too, is, you know, you guys are spending a lot more time with student athletes and the student athletes with the coaches a lot of times than they are with their own parents or your own families. And, you know, that's something that parents need to think about, too. Yeah, you know, there's there's definitely a sacrifice, and um, I would say that there have been times when I'm I, I, I'm not shy of saying that I've maybe given more time to somebody else's kid than maybe my own, and uh, that's not necessarily the best way to do things, and it's something I'm constantly working on myself. And you know, you are a leader. Coaches are leaders. Teachers are leaders, and like you said, I mean, they're high school kids, and we're trying to get them into the next life as successful adults and you know it starts at home i think too a lot of it 
Yeah, you know, and I, I, when you start talking scholarships and those kinds of things, there's far more money in academics than there's ever going to be in, you know, athletics. The, the full ride scholarship is kind of a myth. Yeah. To be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, if kids go to the frontier level, they they might get full tuition at a place, but they're going to have to come up with money in other realms. And, um, you know, that, that isn't the overriding or shouldn't be the overriding goal. Now, do we want to help kids move on and become successful if they are interested in that? Absolutely. But I, again, I think it comes back to, you know, learning how to deal with others and learning how to fail and, um, you know, just learning how to, how to fight through tough times. Well, I've been in contact with Tom Stuber, the great sports writer. I uh, used to be with the AP now with Skyline Sports and, and, you know, the, the basic phrase that the two of us came up with a lot e- to each other was, we have to remember these are 15 to 18 year old kids. They're just kids. It's just a game and it's not life or death. And parents have to understand that too. You can't live your life through your kids. Well, it's double edged sword. The, the emotion that goes into sports is a lot of fun. Right. Um, but sometimes it can, it can cut pretty deeply if, if people feel, you know, let down in one way or the other. And a lot of towns, it's their identity. Um, it's what makes them what they are. You know, having, having lived and coached in Malta, you know, sports is so important there. Um, and it's, it's a huge point of pride. And um, it's, it, it, like I said, it can take on a life of its own. And um, that was, that's what makes it fun, but it can also make it um, trying as a coach. Well, yeah, you don't want to lose to uh, Fairfield. I mean, if you're at Malta and, you know, I, I'm sure you don't like losing to Eureka. <laughs> no, no, and, I, and I, I know Coach Utter would agree that, you know, those are – but, you know, what's interesting is, you know, I, I think very highly of Coach Utter, and we're, we're friends. We talk on the phone about other things, and, uh, you know, I think we have it in the right place. And, you know, I was pretty fired up after a regular season game and kind of – about some things and you know but they understood where I was coming from and they understood why I was fired up and and it isn't anything to do with those guys um, because you know we all want to win at the end of the day and you're not going to find a more competitive person than Coach Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> well I think I think uh, all coaches are very very competitive that's why they do it you have the, the love for the game and, and you want to spread that love down to the kids that you guys coach um you and I have been in contact, like I said, the last couple of weeks. And one thing, you know, potentially getting parents and officials and coaches together in a roundtable discussion to have, you know, a conversation about how to make things better for the kids. Because that's really what it boils down to is the only ones that are getting hurt in this in all this situation is the children. Yeah, I've seen I've seen kids be and I, you know, I can speak to my own experience as a kid being frustrated with my dad and um, how he treated one of my coaches and um, having that conversation at home. And um, I think that's something we have to be mindful of is being supportive without being intrusive. Um, You know, there are times and places where as a parent, you should intervene. Um, If you're worried about your kid's well-being, we should know that, Um, you know, but if you want us to throw the ball more or less or, you know, play different kids in different positions that 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 becomes kind of again not productive yeah yeah and you know you 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 just said something that stuck out and 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 you know tony arnson when he was at helena high we used to have great conversations and he said this was look even when he coached his own kids was you have a 24-hour rule and i think we lost coach there for a sec We'll, we'll try to get Coach back here on the uh, Jason Walker Show, talking with Jim Ben, the Big Fork football coach, about uh, what's been going on across the state of Montana the last couple of, uh, well, the last year, really, and and even more so with uh, the last couple of weeks. We've seen it across the state with Anaconda, Boulder, White Sulphur, uh, Shoto. Uh, we'll try to get Coach back on here in a minute, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, going back to what I was saying about Coach Arnson, you know, they had a – we got Coach back. Uh, Coach Arnson had a had a 24-hour rule, win or lose. And you you can – you know, you stew on it for 24 hours and then you move on. If, that, if there's something to talk about, that's when it's done, and then you move on. And I think a lot of success is made that way, and parents should probably 
be that way too when it comes to their kids, coaches, and officials. Yeah, and again, I think a good rule of thumb is let the kid come back to you. And I, I know from my own experience with my sons, right after something when they were hot, especially my oldest, <laughs> you know, we, which at times was challenging, um, was to kind of leave it and you know uh, give them a chance to kind of. Uh, compress everything and, and figure out where they sit and then let them come back to you and you can have a productive conversation at that point and talk about frustrations and how to deal with them um, and, and that can be really productive um, you know, my son that's now at Carroll you know it has had frustrations at times in different areas and you know again it's if you don't like if you don't understand what's going on go talk to that person and I think that's a great life skill and uh, I think Sometimes parents are worried that there might be retribution if their kid talks to a coach. Um, I think most coaches want to hear from them. I want to hear if a kid wants the ball more. I, I want to hear those um, issues because then I can, then we're then we're working productively towards a solution one way or the other. Or I can give the kid feedback. Well, you know, you're not a varsity player because you're a freshman, and you know, you we need to have you playing at this level so we can develop you a little bit more. Um, give give them feedback that they need so that they can be so they know where they sit sure talking with big fork football coach jim ben he also teaches at uh, the big fork high school there and and one thing too is you know you you want the playing time you want the ball more and it's it's better if if a kid comes to you directly as opposed to putting it out on social media or you know and we use i use that as an example of the you know the pros well you know he doesn't pass me the ball and things like that. You got the diva wide receivers, but it's true. Just go talk to the coach. Don't air your public grievances or your private grievances out there in public. Yeah, and I think we, we want to hear from parents. You know, if, you know, I always give the example. You know, if, if if Johnny's dog got hit by a car this morning and he's really upset and sad, and you know, that's that's the information that I can that will help me. You know, so I don't. I can put my arm around him and say, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry your sorry your dog passed away." You know, yep. any anything like that that we can, you know, help understand your kid. That's that's important, and uh, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, if they broke up with their girlfriends, we probably should know that because maybe they're not going to be the same person at practice that they normally are. And instead of us getting after them, now we have you know at least a jumping off point to understand what they might be going through. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, hey, if you fumble the ball, it's better than fumbling your girlfriend. Um, yeah. Things like that. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I couldn't I don't have the patience to be a coach. I officiated in junior highs for a, a while. But it, and, and even down at that level, you hear it from parents and, and, you know, watching my dad coach junior high basketball for a long time and parents upset about playing time and. You know, the, it, it, they brought it up at the board meeting last week in Jefferson was, look, there's a chain of command. Go to the coach first, because if the coach doesn't know, he can't fix the problem. Don't go over his head. Go to the coach first, and then he can go to the AD, and then it can get, you know, brought up, uh, whatever the, the situation is, however extreme it needs to go. But you got to go talk to that coach first. We talk to the kids daily. You know, what, do you, what do you do if you don't like your role? Um, and they're kind of trained at this point. Talk to my position coach. Okay, well, what if you don't like what your position coach has to say? Then come talk to Coach Ben. And then if you don't feel like there's been a resolution, then, then maybe Coach Ben and your parents need to sit down so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, usually it doesn't need to get to that point if, if everybody's following that process. Um, and that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be controversial things. Um, but I think, again, if we're, we're trying to do what's right for the kids, that should solve 99% of the issues. And again, if there's communication, and we know, you know, if I know that the expectation is that we need to make, make a deep run in the playoffs every year or else, then I can live with that. Or if I need to adjust something I'm doing coaching, you know, I, if, if there's a discipline issue that kind of seems to be continuing to pop up, you know, I'm not, I'm falling short in a category and something where a kid could get hurt or, you know, they're not acting the way that the school wants them to represent the school. Those are things absolutely I should be open to as a coach and be willing to fix. Um, but if I don't, 
that communication isn't there and we're going to jump around and go directly above us, we don't really have an opportunity to fix that. And I think that's what most of us would prefer is give us a chance. Yeah. Well, and, and, and know why a school board's going to not renew a contract if that's the case. And, you know, like Jared Padmos brought it up. He goes, look, if there's no chain of command and we don't know as coaches what's going on, then it's hearsay because you're just getting a, a complaint from someone in the community. Um, and we, we all know how hearsay goes. So um, real quick touch on officiating because parents are always saying officials don't know the rules and, and whatnot. As the son of an official, you know that's not the case. I mean, these, these guys uh, and gals know exactly what they're doing. They put in a lot of hours too, just like coaches do. Yeah, and I, you know, I could have it, having grown up around the Missoula pool in particular, those guys study film. Uh, they solicit and ask for film so that they can, uh, you know, adjust and um, understand where coaches are coming from. If there's a controversial call, a lot of times I would get a phone call from them, you know, kind of saying, you know, did we get this right? Uh, what could we do better the next time? Um, you know, in the middle of the game is not the best time for those conversations. Um, but I, you know, I think we, we all need to understand that if we don't have officials and there is absolutely going to be a shortage and it's only going to get worse, um, we're going to see games on Thursday nights or Wednesday nights and not that prime time Friday night, 7 p.m. game. And, you know, we have to understand that they have a role in the game and they're human. And they're going to make mistakes. Yep. You know, if I got yelled at for every, you know, a lot of times I might make a mistake, make a bad call, and, you know, a kid saves me on it, <laughs> and, and I don't get blown up over it. Right. You know, on the same token, I've had people yell at me to, to run the ball when it was fourth and 33. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's, again, you're dealing with humans that make, you know, I think it's 75 or 80 dollars you know, per game to referee those things. It's not like somebody's getting rich off of that. And just kind of keeping in mind that they're they're doing this because they love kids and they want to give back to a game that they care about. And, you know, I would encourage anybody that is frustrated with those processes to, you know, join a pool. Um, you know, be part of the solution as opposed to being part of the problem. Because um, we do need, we need great referees. And I could name you probably dozens of them that I've worked with over the years that I love to see, you know, when I when I pull into a game, say, hey, this, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a great experience this week because we've got this crew. Yep. Or it couldn't go the other way. There's there's <laughs> there's officials that I'm, get on your. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's guys like oh God, Coach Ben drives me nuts. Oh and, yeah. You know, I you know I think there's that's that's human nature, and again we are sometimes put in an adversarial position because. You know, it's uh, it's natural to disagree when things don't go your way, but you might not catch, you know, when your kid did something yeah. wrong and you're not going to address it the same way, you're going to be happy that, that you maybe you slipped by that one. I know you got to run because you've uh, your prep period's about done, but uh, before I let you go, who wins Class B next year? Because those boys at Jefferson are going to be fired up. <laughs> I tell you what, I uh, I don't even want to try to pick my own league because <laughs> it's going to be absolutely brutal. I mean, we've got two state, two returning state champions in our league. Us as the state runner-up and a semifinalist, and you know somebody could walk out of our league as a four seed and potentially make a deep run just because of matchups and those sorts of things in the playoffs. And um, obviously, our league is going to match up with the South, so. Um, and we're going to play Boulder fairly early in the season, so we're definitely going to kind of know where we sit in the world after we play them. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I think Class B football is in good shape, and uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a little tough uh, moving away from it just because because of the relationships that we have with those teams and with those coaches. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a topic for another day. I guess what next year is that when that happens? Yeah, after after next year, it sounds like we're we're moving up to A. So yeah. Well, you get a whole bunch of new rivals up there in the Northwest. Yeah, a lot less travel. Everybody's in a pretty small radius. So. You mean you don't want to go I'm down to... i with that after last year's playoff run. You, you don't want to go down to Baker or Huntley? <laughs> yeah, you know, those, the, I've, I've had to go to Baker for a playoff game when I was at Ronan, and we left Thursday at noon, and we got home Sunday at 7 a.m. So um, I understand that Montana's 
you really understand how big Montana is when you have to drive for a playoff game. Do you remember what year it was? And I think it was Sydney, but they had to go the year they it was in their big, big run of what seven straight. But they went, I think, to uh, Whitefish and then came back and then went to Columbia Falls and came back. They had like all three of their games in the playoffs were on the road and across the state. I mean, that's that's a lot of travel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I can definitely identify. I was actually thankful that we only only had to go to Townsend and only had to go to Eureka after we went to Glasgow in the first round and then only only to Florence. So um, it could have been far worse if, if different things had happened with the brackets. So yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, there's definitely a lot of travel. That's why we love Montana, though, right? It's one of the things that makes it special. Yeah. So deep. If you're playing in deep in November, and that's good. If you're traveling, that's good. Yeah, not going to catch me complaining about, <laughs> about that. At all. Hey, coach. Uh, appreciate the dialogue on uh, on this, and I think there's you know a lot of positivity that that can come out of it, and and can keep going. And you're welcome anytime. Anytime you uh, you want to hop on, let me know. Absolutely, I appreciate it. And you know, uh, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, you know, Boulder can kind of experience some healing and hopefully people can uh, kind of understand why people might be arguing or those kinds of things and understand that somebody's going to have a different opinion at times. And, you know, while some of us might disagree with how the board did things, you know, maybe that can be a, 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 a learning experience for everyone and maybe it gets better for the next coach down the line. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, good luck this year. Good luck with track, and uh, let's catch up soon. That sounds great. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. That is uh, Big Four Coach Jim Ben joining us. Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. It's not just a bundle. It's your home. It's your auto. It's your life. Mike understands that. Get a hold of Mike Miller State Farm in Helena today. Great conversation. If you missed any of it, we can uh, put it up on the website a little bit later on tonight, but uh, jasonwalkershow.com. Appreciate Coach Ben joining us. And... Uh, Look forward to, to further conversations. Quick break. We'll come back. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Your Montana Rodeo wrap-up, and uh, we'll wrap up the show, too. Hang on. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $289. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. From a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality. Because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. Final segment in the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave on a Tuesday. 
Got the walk-off coming up on this day in history, but it is uh, time for our first Montana Rodeo Roundup of the Year. It is brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. MarkLaRoePhotography.com. He takes unbelievable photos, and uh, his calendars are amazing. Landscape and uh, cowboy calendars. So Montana Bull Riders Dakota Lewis, Matt Triplett will head to the PBR World Finals starting on Friday. Uh, also in the field, former MSU Bull Rider Chase Doherty, who is uh, 12th in the world standings. The year-end finals will be in uh, May for the first time, uh, May 13th through the 22nd. Uh, Dakota, who won Billings at uh, the Unleash the Beast season finale uh, last week, or a couple weeks ago, is uh, ranked 23rd in the world standings, 634 points behind of number one Dalen Swearingen uh, out of uh, the PBR. Triplet, Columbia Falls native who lives in uh, South Dakota, now is ranked 28th. He is 681 points behind Dalen. There will be eight rounds and a million-dollar bonus, and it will be very close. Swearingen and number two, uh, Joao Ricardo Vieira are separated by 8.99 points. And everybody in the top 10 is within 420. So it's going to be pretty darn good. And that gets started this weekend, I believe, on the Cowboy Channel. Nope, CBS Sports Network, I'm sorry. P, uh, CBS Sports Network. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then they'll take a couple of days off and then wrap things up next week, the 19th through the 22nd. Looking forward to that. Uh, your college rodeo just wrapped up. Your Big Sky region and your Montana State Bobcats are your men and women's champs. Uh, Western second on the men's side. Northern second on the women's side. They were about 1,800 points behind the Bobcat women. Bobcat men won by almost 2,000 points. Your men's all around. Caleb Burquist from MSU. Peyton Wollstonehulme of Northwestern in second. Cole Trexler from Miles in third. Women's all around. Northern Montana's McKenna Shower, followed by a couple of Bobcats, Haley Garrison and J.C. Curran. Shelby Rasmussen just in fourth. Saddle Bronk went to Northern Montana's uh, Garrett Cunningham. MSU's Caleb Meek second. Cole Trexler of Miles third. Bearback Trevor Kay of uh, Montana Western, followed by Bobcats Nathan Deerhammer and uh, Caleb Nordstrom. Bull riding, Northwest, a couple of on a uh, uh, couple of Northwest Cowboys on top. Sterling Rogers, number one. William Hughes, two. Chase Runful of MSU, three. Tie down went to uh, Caleb Burquist of MSU. Edward Ramirez of Western, and then uh, Jace Bustat of MSU. Steer wrestling, Montana Westerns. Bryce Harrison, followed by uh, Helena Cowboy, Montana State Bobcat Logan Beatty. And uh, fellow Bobcat Michael Nanini. Team roping, heading side, MSU Burquist. And uh, teammate Tegan Leno, second place. Northwest, Peyton Wollstonehulme and Hagen Wallace. And then in third place, Cameron Handy of Miles and teammate Dalen Danks. Barrel racing, Taylor Moykins. Isn't she the defending national champ? I think she is. Uh, from MSU, followed by... University of Montana's Ashton Carlson and then Shay McDonald of MSU. Breakaway, McKenna Shower of Northern Montana, followed by Molly Salmon and J.C. Curran of MSU. And goat tying, defending national all-around champ Paige Rasmussen, followed by Casey Rogers of Montana Western and Haley Garrison of Montana State. Your PRCA World Standings, you've got Jess Pope sitting in number one, Clayton Bigelow number two, and uh, the closest Montanan is Caleb Bennett, who's out for a while, but he's sitting in 10th. And uh, Richmond Champion is 19th. In Saddle Bronc, it is Melstone Cowboy Sage Newman on top of the world standings with more than 111,000 won this year. Stetson and Ryder Wright coming in second and third currently. Chase Brooks 11th uh, from Deer Lodge. And sitting in that uh, 15 spot, Dawson Hay from Alberta. Let's go to bull riding. And no surprise, it's going to be Stetson Wright, followed by Sage Kimsey, Josh Frost, 
Uh, let's see here. Montanans in the mix. None in the top 15 as of yet. Parker Bredding sitting in 17th currently. You've got Steer Wrestling being led by Hunter Cure from Texas. Uh, let's see. Timmy Sparing of Helena sitting 8th in the world standings currently. Ty Erickson 11th. And uh, that's uh, Jess Brown, former Bobcat, sitting in 16th just out of that top 15 at the moment. But a lot of rodeo still to go. We haven't even hit the Montana portion of the schedule. Caleb Driggers, number one on the heading side. Clay Tryon of Billings, number two. And on the healing side, on the PRCA, Junior Nagata leading the way. And... Going down the list, no Montanans in the top 15. Tie down, John Douch leading the way. And for Montana, Haven Medjid sitting in seventh, the 2019 world champ at a mile city. And then when you go down to barrel racing, Jordan Briggs of Texas, followed by Haley Kinsel, Donna K. Rule sitting in the top three. And uh, Lisa Lockhart sitting currently in 24th. So there are your updates. Your Montana Rodeo Roundup brought to you by MarkLaroePhotography.com. Make sure you check out Mark for all of your fantastic photo needs from the western side of life. And senior pictures and family portraits as well. He does it all. On this day in history, it is May the 10th. It is Clean Up Your Room Day. It is uh, also National Shrimp Day. 1870, Jim Mace defends his heavyweight crown against Irish champ Joe Coburn. The fight goes an hour and 17 minutes. Neither one landed a punch. 1919, Kentucky Derby, the 45th. Sir Barton on the way to the first Triple Crown. British Open on this day, 1929, Walter Hagen wins his fourth. Open title, 1941 at the 66 Preakness, Eddie Acaro, Whirlway, win the second leg of the Triple Crown. And 1981 on this date, Montreal Expo, Charlie Lee, no hits, San Francisco. And that is what happened on this day in history. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. The walk-off brought to you by Cafe Zydeco, where the Big Easy meets the Big Sky, the best Cajun this side of New Orleans. Po' Boys and Catfish and Etouffee and Jambalaya and the Pasta Zydeco is out of this world. It is unbelievable. Oh, and they have beignets, too, and crab and other good stuff. So Cafe Zydeco is the place to go for lunch or dinner. Big thanks to uh, Jim Ben for joining us, the Big Fork football coach. Always a pleasure chatting with him and uh, checking in. He's got some thoughts on how to, uh, how to keep parents better behaved and school boards as well. And if you missed anything, of course, jasonwalkershow.com is where you can get any of our previous shows. Thanks to Coach Ben. Tomorrow on the show, Alex Eshelman, that's what she said. Also, Cola Badbear, Montana State basketball player, will join us. We'll talk about MMIW and uh, the season that wrapped up. And much more, of course. If you missed anything, again, jasonwalkershow.com. We look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Our Twitter is always open, at Sports. Our email, jason at jasonwalkershow.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow, 4 o'clock, inside the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave, the walk-off, brought to you by Cafe Zydeco, where the big easy meets the big sky. We'll see you tomorrow, 4 o'clock, right here, Jason Walker Show. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.